Hello, and welcome to the world's sweatiest microphone review. I have a towel for all the sweat. Yeah, so if you're an American, you're moving to Spain, you're going to live here during the summer, rent an apartment with air conditioning. I didn't do that. All right, so let's get into it. So I don't see that many videos or that much content at all, really, that compare the P420, the AKG P420, to the Rode NT1. They're all the P420 versus the Rode NT1A, which honestly, it makes sense because the NT1A and the P420 are in a much more similar price bracket and they also have a lot more similar sound. But I don't know if you've noticed, I've certainly noticed as an audio YouTuber, the NT1 is becoming increasingly more pervasive in a number of different areas, particularly in streaming. Towel time. My prediction is that carrying on into the future, the NT1 is going to be the more popular microphone when compared to the NT1A, when in the past I would say the NT1A was the more popular mic. So on first look, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but these two microphones are extremely different. See, now the P420 I'm finding has much more of an emphasis in the high mid-range and the high end in general, whereas the NT1 likes to talk about its flat range response, emphasizing a smooth mid-range and honestly all around flat, honest microphone. Now, when we look at the P420, we're going to see on the frequency response, a high-end shelf, a boost around the 2K and an even larger boost in the higher end range from like the 8K to 10K range. Basically, what I'm saying, is it's going to boost high mid-range and it's also going to boost the high highs which again is more similar to the NT1A. Now as we've discussed countless times on the channel the Rode NT1 has what's trying to be a perfectly flat response with only a really slight boost in the super high end like the 10k. So from the beginning these two microphones have very different natures but even when you go into the feature sets of these two different microphones again very different. For example the NT1 has essentially no features on the outside. It's a microphone it can only pick up what's right in front of it and it can only do it in cardioid. So the P420 actually has three different polar patterns. It has figure eight you can pick up what's behind it and also what's in front of it. It has omni meaning you can pick up literally anything around it in a full circle and it also has cardioid the standard pick up what's right in front of it the same thing that the NT1 has. Okay towel time. In addition to that, it has some stuff in the back like a low end cut and also a negative 20 dB pad you can use to put it in front of louder signals. Now, negative 20 dB is kind of aggressive. I'm used to seeing like a negative 10 dB cut. Um, so it's interesting to see how that could be used in a studio setting for even louder signals. Although to me, it's maybe a little bit aggressive. Now, while it might seem like this is all bells and whistles and there's a lot of other features on the P420 that the Rode NC1 doesn't have, which is true, there's a lot of features that the Rode NC1 has that's just not immediately apparent from the outside. For example, it has an internal shock mount, which helps reject a lot of noise coming from the outside world. It also has an extremely low self noise of four dBA. That's about one sixth the volume of a human whisper. Rode likes to say it's the quietest microphone on the market. It also has really low impedance and a 10 year warranty backing up its quality. Whereas the AKG P420 has a self noise of 15 dBA, about half the volume of a whisper, that's a lot louder. And a much smaller warranty, a one year to five year warranty, depending on the part of the microphone that's broken. So I'm going to get into some personal opinions about these two microphones. First off, let's talk about how these microphones are marketed. See, oftentimes, whenever we're talking about the NT1, I find people like to compare it to higher end microphones. It's a low budget microphone being compared above its weight class. Now, in comparison to that, on AKG's actual website, the P420 is listed as a Project Studio microphone, which I think is kind of strange. I don't know any microphone company that would deliberately call one of its products Project Studio worthy. It seems like a weird marketing choice to write that down, but you know, Maybe I'm missing something. And also a kind of related opinion. Whenever I get closer to this microphone, I'm noticing a few things. To me, I'm noticing more buildup in the high mid range than I would normally. And I'm noticing a pretty harsh sibilance. It's not overly harsh. And honestly, the high buildup in the mid range isn't overly boxy, but it, it is noticeable when you compare it to other microphones of this class. Whereas the NT1 has a lot smoother response to my voice. I find that actually has a really nice response to my low mid range, kind of gives it a nice presence. On the opposite side, I find that the NT1 has kind of a harsh sibilance, surprisingly so. So much so that it actually kind of makes me think that the frequency response of the NT1 is a little bit misleading. 
tss, tss, the S sounds on an NT1 are surprisingly harsh, at least with my specific microphone. I also find that the NT1 doesn't have as much off-axis rejection as the P420 does. I hear more of my room when I'm speaking into the NT1. That being said, I find the audio quality of the NT1 to be much more desirable. I, I like the way it sounds in my voice better, and I think in general it's better at recording things. So let's talk about the quality of these two microphones. Both, I, I think, are really good quality. In terms of the shock mount you get, you used to get a way better shock mount with the Rode, and, and the one I use in this video is not the shock mount you get with the Rode NT1 anymore. You get the newer, updated one, which I have it here, which is here, this one. As far as I can tell, they're the same shock mount. They literally buy them from the same manufacturer. One is just coated in a matte black, one is in a glossy black towel break. The AKG P420 is extremely heavy, and I know we all like to hold a really solid object that feels well built and, and heavy but this is almost heavy to a fault. Whenever you combine it with its mostly metal shock mount and its extremely heavy weight, my microphone stand even started tipping over. That being said, I find the build quality to be really nice. It's just maybe too much weight. In my completely metal working amateur opinion, I think the Rode NT1 is a higher quality metal and it's lighter and it still feels amazing. I just find that the mesh on top is maybe a little bit more thin than the one on the P420. And again, NT1 has a 10 year warranty. They're very confident in their product and how long it's gonna last. And mine is really old, mine's like six years old at this point, so I believe them. Now, in reviews in the past, I've given you some technical specification and I can leave it up on the screen. I'm not gonna go through it in a list form right now, but I did wanna take this video to specifically talk to creators out there, whether that be through music, podcasting, voiceover, anything that requires audio work for your content. I want to talk about the threshold of quality and on practicality because I think it's important and I think as people that are so caught up in getting the best audio quality possible, we lose sight of the goals of what we're trying to produce sometimes. See, for a, a large portion of this review, I've talked about why I think the NT1 is a better microphone, but the P420 is cheaper and comes with a lot of extra bells and whistles, the polar patterns, the cut, and the pad. Because it can pick up from this side and it can also pick up from this side, that means if you're working in a podcast setup and you can only afford one microphone, this would be the better microphone because you can record two people from either side. You could also record a podcast setup where everyone is surrounding the microphone. So you can have even more than two people on this microphone. You can't do that with the NT1. And to give the P420 a degree of flexibility on AKG's webpage, it says it should be used for recording strings, piano, horns, and like percussion drums not necessarily voice, but it can still record voice pretty well. You see, you have to think as a content creator, as someone who's making a product that the end goal is to be entertaining, people aren't gonna be listening for the audio quality. If it's passable, they're going to forget about it. Good audio, how towel break, good audio should immerse you into the content more. It shouldn't be the star of the show. If you're making content that is not completely focused on audio, for example, you're making something that is like a voiceover for an animation, if you're making something that has to do with visuals in it as well as audio, the threshold of quality from the P420 is still entirely usable. And for a lot of other microphones too. Everyone wants to buy the best of the best. Everyone wants to buy the highest quality object because they think it's going to improve their content. Quite honestly, not everyone is going to be listening for audio quality. They're going to be listening to the actual content itself. Now, if you're working in music production and recording, you may merit buying a higher quality microphone. But if you're working in content where audio is merely the peripheral, take into consideration all the different things that the microphone can offer you, including polar patterns. Polar patterns are a huge one and makes the microphone incredibly flexible. If you are concerned about audio quality, you need to take a few things into account. Am I just looking for a microphone that I can point directly at it and get the best audio quality possible? Well, that's the NT1. Am I looking for a microphone that's more versatile at a cheaper price? Well, then the P420 might be better for you, even though I find its audio quality to be personally not as good as the NT1. All right, I'll get off my soapbox and I will introduce our guest singer. <laughs> Today we have Quinn McGovern, otherwise known as Sister James, who is releasing a really cool EP called I Hate It Here. If you're a fan of like Tom York or kind of indie rock, highly recommend. I had the honor of doing a remix for one of the tracks. I am super excited. And then after that, we're going to do our typical blind guitar hearing test so you can hear both these microphones without the bias of sight. Let's hear them. It will be long and frustratingly slow It's gonna ask more from you than you know But in the end, we'll show 
shine inside its glow And I will thank you all for the good times Oh, thank you all for the good Like skin growing over splinters, a warm place for softening the edges, and looking back on all of the good times, remembering all of the good times. Okay, look, if I don't have my mic stand tightened to the proper amount, it, it just swings like a pendulum because it's so heavy. Watch. Goodbye. Heavy microphone, geez. All right, that was all. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you want lessons, email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. I'll put my qualifications up on the screen but I have a degree in audio and I also play guitar. I've been playing guitar for like 10 years. And for those of you wondering, I'm going to do a 1000 subscriber special next week.